Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're in the Phoenix A320 following its recent update and today we're going to be having a look at the differences between a flaps full landing and a flaps 3 landing. Not only when you should do which landing, but also what are the subtle differences that you as a pilot need to know about. Today we are in Barcelona, new scenery just released by MK Studios and for the next week you can actually get this scenery from Inables for just £12. There's a link in the video description down below, click that and it will allow you to purchase this and also support the channel at the same time. We're also in Barcelona for another reason and that is because it has a nice long runway which is going to give us the perfect opportunity to show the differences between a flaps 3 landing and a flaps full landing. Now I'm often asked particularly on live streams which one is best and to be honest there isn't really a best or favorite. A lot of it is to do with where you're landing and if you're actually going to be able to land with a flaps 3 landing and if that is the case why would we choose a flaps 3 over say a flaps full what are the benefits and what are the differences as well of course as what are the threats with a flaps 3 landing okay so we are currently just sat circling in a hold at 7,000 feet just south of Barcelona Airport and what we're going to do as I said it was we're going to have a look at the differences between landing a flaps full landing and a flaps 3 landing and show you basically the difference between the two now this has become much more apparent since the release of the second block of the Phoenix version 2 aircraft the pitch angle for the two different flap settings has now been corrected and is much more like real life which means we actually now need to start looking at those differences and what you'll actually see the picture out the window as you come to land the first thing we're going to do though is our landing calculation because I often do this on our live stream and people are perhaps a little bit confused at how I go about it so let's first of all take you through the steps for uh, doing that the first thing we need to know then is how heavy the aircraft is going to be when we land what is our landing weight going to be and of course the easiest way to do that is just take your zero fuel weight and add to it your estimated fuel at your arrival airport which for us today is going to be 59 tons all right so we're going to put 59 tons in as our estimated landing weight that's done, we're going to land on runway 24, we want to get the latest meta, apply that. Alright, now the first thing I'm going to do, and this is where perhaps I confuse a few people on the live streams, is we're going to do a landing calculation with a runway condition code of Two. Now, obviously, if we have a quick look out the window, we can see um, it's not raining down there. It's actually, a, might be a bit of a dull day, but it's certainly not medium to poor braking action on the runway. Now, the reason we do this, though, is the first thing we're going to look at is what landing distance is available and what landing distance is required. So, as you can see from this, the landing distance available is 3,352. The landing distance required is 2,100. And 65. Basically, we've got a lot more runway than we need um, in order to land. And that was this with the runway condition code of 2. If we had done this calculation with a runway condition code of 2 and the landing distance required was more than the landing distance available, well, at that point, then we would look to use max reverse thrust when landing. But because in this example, we have got more than enough runway to stop after we've landed. We know that we're just going to be quite happy using reverse idle. We're not going to need any max reverse thrust or anything like that. So that is the reason for doing a runway condition code to um, test of the landing capabilities just to see whether we are going to use idle or whether we're going to use max reverse. And of course, this may be airline specific, and it's just the standard operating procedures that uh, that I'm used to uh, I'm used to using. Okay, but then you can actually go in and put in what the real conditions are for our flight today, and that is, of course, dry weather, and we know 
that with that it's going to be even better performance. Now we know as well that the difference between flaps full and flaps three is going to change our landing distance required a little bit. So this is the first thing in determining which landing flap configuration you're going to use. Obviously if you can't get into your runway because you're heavy and you're landing on a short runway, maybe somewhere like Gibraltar or somewhere like Jersey, then of course you're limited to what your landing performance calculation is. If it says flaps three isn't going to work but flaps full, well that decision has been it's been made for you. you. You can't argue with that. You're going to be doing a flaps full landing. And of course, a flaps full landing, the reason it takes up less room is because you're not going to be flying as fast. The aircraft can approach the runway much slower on the approach with a flaps full landing, whereas with flaps three, it will come in at a slightly faster speed. Now, there are also good things about that as well. If you're flying the aircraft with a slightly faster approach speed, then there are schools of thought which say the aircraft is a little bit more responsive. You've got a lot more air, of course, going over those control surfaces. So your ailerons, etc., the rudder, which is why when the weather is quite gusty and windy, a lot of pilots do prefer flaps three because it's a little bit more responsive than the uh, flaps full landing. The aircraft also has more energy as well to get through those gusts and the windy weather. Other reasons why we like flaps three is flaps three uses less fuel for landing. So of course the airlines really like this. Also the engines aren't working as hard, so there is less wear and tear on those, meaning maintenance costs are reduced. Again, airlines like this. And another reason for doing flaps three is the engines, as they're not working as hard, they're actually quieter as you approach. So it's much better for the airport environment and the people on the ground down below. A flaps three landing is a much quieter landing than flaps full. There is, of course, a greater threat to take into account when doing a flaps three landing, and we are going to take a little closer look at this once we are on our final approach. Okay, so we are about seven miles out. Let's just get the gear down and sort ourselves out. We'll also select our flaps three, which is going to be our landing configuration for, uh, for this landing. So that's all done. Just check the overhead. That's all set. So obviously autopilot is still engaged at the moment. That's six miles and we've obviously got the airport in sight. Okay, once the aircraft has slowed down and we're basically fully stabilized for landing, I want you to have a look at the navigation display and in particular look at the, uh, the pitch that the aircraft is set at. You can see we're just coming up to about five miles now. Now, slowing down to our final approach speed and if you now have a look at this view this is kind of the view that I like to have for uh, for landing we can see all the instruments etc and we've got a good view as well outside now on the face of it looking straight out at the view that you've got there it looks like we are almost at a level angle as we're coming in but then have a look down at the primary flight display and you can see we're actually pitched up at about five degrees if we have a quick look at outside as well. This obviously confirms the nose up attitude that we saw from the primary flight display. Now I mentioned a little bit earlier that there is a threat with doing a flaps three landing and that of course is the greater risk of a tail strike over rotating on a flaps three landing because the aircraft is already pitched up means that there is a much bigger chance of striking the tail. So obviously you can hopefully see now the difference between what this perspective actually looks like and what angle of attack the aircraft actually is at. So I've just taken the autopilot off, we're just going to bring the aircraft in. And because as we are approaching with a flaps three landing, the pitch attitude is quite nose up anyway, you'll probably find that you don't need to flare anywhere near as much as what you might think. So I'm just chasing those pappies a little bit at the moment. That's 500 feet, so we are stable. We've got three red, one right. We're just compensating for that, and we're, uh, we're okay. But again, just keep an eye on 
the primary flight display seeing how high we are in terms of our, uh, our nose pitch and when we get to 30 feet and we cut the thrust I'm hardly going to put any back pressure on that side stick so here we go 50, 40, cut the thrust just hold back a little bit and that's us down and I hardly had to do anything at that point because we were already coming in nose up and it means that you don't have to pull back as much as you would do to flare with a config full landing okay so here we are for the flaps full landing and straight away we're fully configured for it, our approach speed you can see we're only pitched up now at about two and a half degrees which means that yes you are going to need perhaps a little bit more back pressure on that side stick for the flare and if we have a quick look outside as well you should be able to see that yes we are still pitched up but nowhere near as much as what we were with the flaps three landing Here here then our approach speed is slower and we are obviously then going to stop in a shorter distance than we would with the flaps full landing of course back here in the flight deck that picture that you've got out of the window it still doesn't look like you're pitched up really at all but as you've just seen looking outside we are uh, not as much as we are with the flaps 3 landing of course but again just the picture out here looks different compared to what we saw previously with flaps 3 let's just go through our normal uh, landing then and I will probably feel that I will need to just pull that side stick back a little bit more to hold that flare and hopefully achieve a nice gentle touchdown. We've just passed through uh, 700 feet RA so let's get the autopilot turned off and then bring her in for the usual manual landing on a nice day like this. A little bit of wind uh, from the right, most of it a headwind but perhaps a little bit of rudder needed to decrab as we come in. We're holding the pappies, we're holding the glide slope quite uh, quite nicely. And we can just see we're off centre line a little bit to the left, so let's just try and get back on that. We're going to need to decrab with a little bit of left rudder, I think, as we come in. Minimum. That's our minimum, so we're going to continue. Just focusing now on the touchdown point, we can ignore the pappies as we've got closer to the airport. And just keep that touchdown point in our field of view. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, so yeah, a little bit more decrabbing needed on uh, this approach than the last one, but I definitely needed to pull back just a little bit more than we did when I did the flaps 3. Also I filmed this with live weather and the wind hasn't really changed too much between the last approach we did and this one. You can see that the winds were just affecting me a little bit more with the flaps full landing than the flaps 3. Maybe because we were flying a little bit slow which is nice because that is also a kind of uh, a kind of symptom you get of uh, flaps 3. As I say you have more energy with flaps 3 so you're just pushing through uh, those winds a little bit more but I would love to hear in the comments down below which you would prefer flaps full or flaps 3 and if you have yet to try a flaps 3 landing then please do go and try it then come back and let me know how you found it in particular how you're getting on with the uh, the flaring of the aircraft and the new Phoenix after its update thank you so much for watching a quick reminder that the MK Studios Barcelona scenery we've been flying into today is available for for just £12 at the moment from Innerbuilds. Click on the link in the video description down below and you'll be able to grab that. I hope you have found this video useful and of course if you have please don't forget to leave a like on your way out and of course if you are new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future videos and live streams. Thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye for now.